Bear Squad, what is going on? It's Polar Bear here. I'm excited because this video is not like double or triple or quadruple speed or anything. This video is only like sped up a little bit. The, uh, the actual time frame here was about 35 minutes and the video is 20. So it wasn't super bad. So I'm wicked, wicked excited that, about that. How is everyone's Sunday going? Guys, I'm super, super pumped about this. This is our airport location. We have not been to this location in a while. We're gonna start servicing it weekly. Um, it doesn't need that. We're kind of doing it for YouTube content and also to make sure the, the machine is looking clean and um, just making sure that we're there to make sure everything's functioning properly every week. Um, we have to make a couple trips in here because I'm not sure in the beginning, I wasn't sure like how much, uh, how much product was actually in there and bam, that sucker is so empty, man. That's going to make a great thumbnail. I can't wait to see it. So empty. When your machine gets that empty, you know, you know, everything's going well. There's literally one bag of chips left. One singular bag of chips. It's all there is. <laughs> So it's time to fill this sucker to the brim, guys. We're gonna fill it right up with some new product. Uh, I like this in particular because I know that uh, none of the product was spoiled. And that's, that's good, that's what you want. This guy sitting there on his phone, me and him wind up having a pretty good conversation while I'm there. I try to make chitter chatter with whoever I can to make my job easier and go by faster. Now, um, I was on a Facebook group the other day and I noticed that someone was having issues with the way they uh, pack a machine, uh, single coils in particular. I want you guys to pay attention to what I'm doing here, okay? If you're watching this and you're gonna get into this business, that corner, that right hand corner needs to go forward. You see, watch what I do. The bottom of the coil, stick it through just like that. Pull it through that way. I see a lot of people that are stuffing their chips in there diagonally with the coil on the bottom instead of it being in front of the coil. So there's nothing to actually push it. And only about like 60, 70% of the time will the machine vend. You'll wind up having a whole bunch of catching issues this doesn't work out. So you definitely, definitely don't want that popping up. You can see this guy's talking away with me. We're having a good time getting stuff done. And uh, I think I wind up going through this whole box on this top row alone. This is a five wide. So we'll finish up this top row and then we'll move on to the next one here. And bam, just like that, we're done with the top row, pulling the second row out. And we're gonna be using, you're gonna notice, I've got a couple of coils that are a little bit thinner. Uh, they're, they're higher count coils than what I usually have for chips. So they're a little bit more difficult to fit stuff in. Uh, one ounce bags would fit in there fine, but I've got competition. So I don't really make a profit on this machine right now. I'm trying to knock my competition out of there. I do have to say I'm probably not going to put a machine where I have competition again. 
I, uh, I don't particularly like doing it. If I need to, like, if they call me and ask me to put a machine in, I'll do it. But this is a machine that I went out there and located. This is the only machine that I located. The rest of them all came to me. But uh, if I physically go out there and locate, I'm going to try to make sure that my competitor is out of there before I locate instead of just putting them in there and trying to drive them out. But uh, we're going to run through. We're going to fill this sucker up the best that we can. I think I moved stuff around a few times to make it fit right. Okay, so here I try to fit these lays in that really skinny coil, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. So we're going to move it to the uh, shelf below it. Just for reference guys, this is an AP113 uh, snack machine, one of my favorite models of machines, USI and AP, actually I think, I think that's all I have for snack machines is USI and APs. If you guys see a model of machine called a row, I see a lot of people buying up these rows. Um, row has been out of business for something like 25, 26 years now, and the parts are extremely hard to find. Don't buy these machines. They, it's not good for you or it's not going to help. You'd be better off looking for a USI or an AP machine. AP generally sells for a pretty inexpensive price. Some people think they're gold, but uh, they're solid machines, but I wouldn't pay. I paid, actually I paid $50 for this specific machine. And then uh, the, I have another AP at uh, our VIP location and that one I paid $400 for. move the cookies over we don't need to spread them out anymore and we're gonna put the one ounce bags on the bottom here try to get a little bit of margin I actually I will make money on those if they sell These sun chips, I've got really high hopes for these sun chips because I've been hearing a lot about how uh, the sun chips are selling really well for people in other regions. I don't know how they'll do in my region, but can only hope for the best, right? So we got uh, the vi vinegar, salt and vinegar chips. This uh, switching over, like I'm kind of doing like a slow takeover of the one ounce bags. Switching over to the one ounce bags is experimental right now. So I'm looking forward to see how things work out. I've already done it at my Claremont Subaru location and that's the location that's really gonna tell us what happens. But hypothetically, should work out because prices go down, margins go up. The only difference is the bags are a bit smaller. Uh, you could get a customer dissatisfaction from that. But we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. 
Um, I don't have any Skittles at this time. This was the last snack machine that I filled up. So what I fill up is literally what I have left for product for the month. And this is why we're gonna come in. We're gonna come in once a week just to make sure that there are no empty holes. We'll fill in the empty holes with product that's in the machine already. Got the Sour Patch Kids. Thank you to one of my subscribers for pointing that out. Um, putting those in there. They've got a decent margin. I mean, I shouldn't say a decent margin. Their margin is average. It's, uh, it is what it is. Now, I do wish that I could, I still can't get a hold of it yet, but I wish I could get a hold of, like, uh, the big Texas rolls and stuff like that. I could if I drove an hour and a half to go get my product. But uh, I don't really want to do that, so it's probably not going to happen. But you can see we're going through boxes. Uh, we're going through product really, really quick here trying to fill up whatever we can with what we got I think we wind up using that entire box of almonds this is one of the locations that sells almonds pretty well yep we're gonna use that entire box of almonds I'm gonna have to buy almonds for the first time in like two months they sell well here and at my Claremont Subaru location. Everyone's about to get on their plane. Fill up that coil. Now that Milky Way box was just a couple of uh, odds and ends that were left over and I didn't really want to keep the box just for one or two pieces. We're going to finish up this Snickers box. You got to have Snickers in there, even if it's only three. I can't get a hold of Crunch anymore. Well, at least they didn't have Crunch at BJ's when I went in there. regular M&Ms. I think we're able to fill that thing right all the way up. Actually, I'm pretty sure we can fill that thing all the way up. All right, moving on to peanut M&Ms. Now guys, same thing with the chips. You want to make sure that the lower right hand corner on this type of machine and the way the coil set, you want to make sure that lower right hand corner is above, like pushed forward a little bit. I think that's all we can use from what we have here. We're going to go grab a couple more things out of the van to fill up uh, whatever's left here. And we're going to throw the trash in the van so we can throw it out when we get back to the house. Oh, oh, I put the first bags in upside down. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. I just had to peek. 
It's not like super full yet. It's only been there for a week since we collected it, so. Oh, uh, it's almost two weeks since we collected it, actually. So I'm getting messages right now because I'm about to go buy a trailer. <laughs> I was just trying to, I needed to buy a trailer because we're going to be moving a uh, new soda machine, or not a new soda machine, one of the soda machines from the storage unit into our VIP location because uh, actually by the time you see this video, hopefully that soda machine should be in its location. All right, so we need smart food, popcorners, and Cheez-Its. Grab those, load them on the cart, and go get some stuff done. This is one of those locations that I do not trust the machine to be left open. Um, I know I get some comments about that every now and again. There are certain locations I'm okay with it, and then there are certain locations I 100% absolutely am not okay with it. And this is one of them. Those Cheez-Its will fit perfectly in that little snack row. We're going to fill up as much as we can. We actually, uh, I'm pretty sure we used the rest of the container altogether. Yep, we most certainly do. And then after that, we're going to throw in the popcorners. It's like my new favorite snack to sell, those popcorners. The margins are high, they last forever. People buy the crap out of them. Look at that technique. Look at that technique. So someone asked me why I didn't fill from the back forward. I don't think that you should fill from the back forward. Um, this person who asked me this said that they've been in the vending industry for a long time and uh, you're supposed to fill from the back forward, but that just does not make sense to me, especially if you have product in there. Like if it's empty, I could see filling from the back forward. You you have to add a step to what you're doing. You have to count your coil. See, I just counted the coil twice because I couldn't remember the number. And uh, even then, you're gonna bring it all the way to the front and sometimes you might forget one or undercount or overcount or then you have to move a bag. It just seems like an extra step to me. Actually, it could be an extra couple of steps depending on mistakes made I'm gonna throw these bad boys in there you can see you can see the coil sizes keep getting smaller as we go in and this this is actually a good example I miscounted um, the coils when I did this and I wound up having to put another one in the back after filling it from the back forward. Bam! Good to go. Everything's looking sweet. Now we got some good old smart food. Gotta have the smart food man. Everyone loves smart food. That and smart food also has really, really awesome expiration dates. Cough, cough. Just saying. I think I filled that to the brim. Yeah, you can only fit two more in there. Three more, maybe? Two or three. Two more? Looks like two more. But uh, that's going to wrap it up here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please check out the description below. See if there's anything that you need that can help me out. All right, Bear Squad. 
Have a great Sunday. Remember to love life and live your dreams. Peace out.